All right, welcome to the next video. So, the first thing I want to ask you with this video is, what can you do on the Internet? Sounds like a simple question, right? So I want to take, want you just to take a minute or two and think about this and go ahead and pause it. Now, welcome back. So one of the first things that comes to mind, I know when I think about this question, is basically just anything you can do in a web browser. So go to YouTube, go to Gmail, go to TU Portal, hopefully, go to Canvas, um, all of that kind of stuff, any web page, any web browser you want. But the Internet's actually a lot bigger than that, right? Um, think about it. You play Xbox on the Internet, right? Or Nintendo Switch, that's what I play. Um, you can connect with other people via voice chat on the Internet, right? I think of FaceTime is the biggest one there. Um, so I, I connect with people via Zoom all the time on my computer. So there's all sorts of other ways to use the Internet rather than just um, your web browser. And your web browser is um, gets you access to the World Wide Web, right? So those two things are different. That's the reason why I wanted you to think about um, what you can do on the Internet. So the Internet and the World Wide Web are different. So let's say you're playing Xbox and uh, you want to connect to your friend um, whenever you're playing. Um, or let's say, say you're playing uh, Super Smash Brothers or Mario Kart, my, two of my favorites and you're trying to find someone else to play. Well, how can you find someone on the Internet? So you might say, you know, you search for their, your, the friend code or, or, their, or their username or whatever. But that is not a location on the Internet. Um, and that there's a lot of people with that same username in different areas of the Internet. So how, how is the standard? We talked about the ASCII standard last video about using converting um, you know binary to letters so there's actually another standard that helps you convert um, you know from your actual physical location on the internet so the computer that you're using or the Xbox that you're using um, and so it used to be something called IPv4 and so it used to be four bytes each and it gave you something called an IP address. So in this case, it's the 123.45.67.89. Point 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 the problem with that is when they first start, came up with that, they were like, oh, great, we got, we'll, we'll just do four bytes each. Not a big deal. We'll have 4.3 billion possible addresses, and that'll be easy because we're never going to get to 4.3 billion things on the Internet. Well, as you probably can think about, um, there's – more than 4.3 billion things on the internet now. So they moved to something called IPv6. So if you see something crazy like this, that is actually your internet address. And it's 128 bits each, so they're not showing all 128, they're actually uh, narrowing it down here. Uh, we won't really discuss how that works. Um, but um, there's apparently 340 undecillion. I don't know if I've ever known that undecillion was a word, but there's a lot of possible addresses. That's the idea. So this IP address is the unique location of any device on the Internet. So it's a sort of a unique value that each device has um, to find them. And sometimes, you know, the device could be your home router, and then your home router could distinguish um, between the different devices that are connected to your Wi-Fi at home. Uh, but we're not really going to get into that. Uh, you can just think of it as each, as each device. So now, so that's how you can find things on the Internet. But how do you find stuff on the, um, most of the time we're not typing in this crazy number to find a web page or something. So we actually have something, um, we usually have web addresses, right? Google.com, tuportal.temple.edu. Um, so how does that work? So there's something, something called, you type in a, a web address, there's something called a domain name system, and it converts that URL, like Amazon.com or Google.com, to an IP address. So you get that IP address. And then the browser, so Google Chrome, Firefox, 
um, Safari, whatever, whatever you use. The browser initiates a connection between your device and the device at that IP address. So the, it basically just connects your two devices together. Um, you don't need to worry about the special process. The browser asks for information. So basically, your browser for you, when you type in that web address, it's basically telling them, hey, give me some information, please. And the server, which is that other thing that, you know, the Amazon server, Google server, whatever, sends back a response. And usually it's in the form of text. So you ever seen sort of crazy um, text come up in a web browser when you hit a key by accident? It's probably HTTP text. Or if you've ever designed a website and gone really deep into that, um, it's HTTP text. And that's basically how um, everything communicates on the Internet. And then your browser basically converts that HTTP text to a visual pleasing, hopefully if it's a good website, right, that you see. So that's the way it really works. So that's the way the internet, the internet, um, the World Wide Web works and connects to two places on the internet. 